What's up everybody, Pete here from the Sunday Drive. Today we're working on my 2004 Silverado 1500 4x4 and we're gonna show you how to change the shift solenoids and the torque clutch solenoid. So stay tuned. So as I said, we're working on my 2004 Silverado and this truck is equipped with the 4L60E transmission. This will be pretty much the same for any rear wheel drive automatic transmission for GM. So we're gonna be replacing the 1-2 shift solenoid, the 3-4 shift solenoid, the 3-2 shift solenoid, finally the torque converter clutch pulse width modulation solenoid. Now the 1-2 and the 3-4 shift solenoids are usually referred to as the A and B shift solenoids if you've ever heard that. And usually you wanna replace those ones together. You don't always need to replace the 3-2 and the torque converter ones unless you're having issues, but we wanted to show you how to do it anyway. So let's get started. So we're under the truck right now. The camera is facing the back of the truck and this shift linkage is on the driver's side. We need to remove this or at least disconnect it and get it out of the way so that we can drop the pan. So. Just pry this out with the screwdriver. Wiggle this out. And then come back here and then pop this clip out, which is holding the shift linkage into this bracket. And that one just slides out. So this kind of looks like a staple. And next, just push in on the tabs on each side of here to pull this out. Now, once this is out of the way, this bracket will be in the way in the future, but it will bend out a little bit with a pry bar. We can start removing these 16 bolts around the perimeter of the pan. Next, you want to remove the three nuts holding the exhaust to the manifold, and that'll give us a little bit of wiggle room. We're also going to remove the exhaust hanger near the back of the truck, and that'll allow us to pull down on the exhaust and get enough clearance to pull the pan out. So here's the nuts that you need to remove. There's three 15 millimeters uh, holding the exhaust to the manifold. You can also remove the driver side, but we broke two swivel head extensions trying to get to one of them. So we gave up and we found out that you really don't need to do it anyway. So if you want a little bit more flexibility, go ahead and remove that driver side. Otherwise you can get by with just the passenger side. Now take a 13 millimeter socket and start these bolts by hand. Don't loosen them all the way. Just make sure that they all wanna spin. That's the first part of the challenge is making sure none of the bolts have rusted into place. So we've got a very tall catch can that we're using. Uh, it's very helpful when we have trucks and vehicles up on the lift because you don't have to let the fluid drop six feet into a pan. So I'm gonna get this close enough. We're gonna try and drain the pan from the front. Okay. Now we're gonna loosen the bolts in the back but not take them all the way out because we don't want the pan to just fall. And we wanna kinda control where the fluid goes. I just gotta pry it away carefully without making a mess. It is up there pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so I've broken the seal. I'm gonna let it drain a little bit. Now be careful using a screwdriver. Um, obviously I needed to use it to pry, but you don't want to pry too hard. You can bend the pan, you can crack it, um, or you could just scratch one of the surfaces and it'll never seal right again. So be very careful if you have to use something metal to pry the pan away. I don't want to uh, let go of this completely because there's a lot of weight on the back of the pan right now. So we got Cliff holding up the front of the pan. I'm holding up the back. Oh, 
Now we're going to slowly drop this pan. So now to drop the pan, we actually need to pry back on this bracket um, that was holding the shift linkage in. And that'll allow us to release the pan. So go ahead and stick a pry bar up between here. This way you can uh, pull the bracket back towards the drive shaft and get clearance on the driver's side. And then you're gonna pull down on the exhaust system on the passenger side to get clearance over there. We use the fluid pump to pump the fluid out of this pan so that way we're not gonna have anything spilling on us when we try to take this out. Now when I'm pulling down on this exhaust, um, that's because it's on the lift and it's like hard to get anything to pull down. But on the 2014 Silverado video, we came up with a contraption with a jack, a piece of wood, and like a strap or a chain. And you can use that to pull down on the exhaust as well and get the clearance you need. So check that out. It'll be in the link in the corner. Um, that's really helpful if you're doing this job on the ground. So Cliff is pulling the bracket away on the driver's side and I'm pulling down on the exhaust and there we go, it's out. Now some people don't like to pry on that bracket on the uh, shifter linkage. It did bend it a little bit. We're gonna have to try and bend it back. But the other alternative is getting to the bolts on the top, which is really hard to do. Piece of advice, you might wanna pull the dipstick out before you do this job. It's not really in the way, but uh, you know, it's just one less thing to get caught up on. Just go ahead and get behind it, wiggle it out. The front is where it goes into the transmission, so that's where you wanna apply the most downward force and drain out whatever was left in the filter. Now we're at the point in the process where you can get to all the shift solenoids. You can see there's two in the front and there are two in the back. The two in the back are like this. This is the one, two and the three, four shift solenoids. Uh, this one is just one or the other. It's also known as the A or the B shift solenoids. Um, they're the identical part number and all you have to do is swap those out. You always want to replace these two together. So you always wanna replace the two in the back right here at the same time. At the front we have a torque converter clutch pulse width modulated solenoid and we also have the three two solenoid. So this is slightly different than the one two and the three four. This one actually is for downshifting. All right, so the first one we're gonna focus on is the front passenger side and that is a torque converter clutch pulse width modulated solenoid or valve. So just stick a screwdriver under this blue tab cool. or your thumb and pop that off. All right, pull this plug out. And now we're gonna release this clip in this little hole. So go ahead and spin this so that the bottom of the clip is visible. We're gonna use a very tiny screwdriver to get up in there and pry it out. Stick the screwdriver up and go ahead and pull this clip out. And make sure you catch the fluid that comes out. This is the torque converter clutch solenoid. By inspecting the metal screen, you can see if it's kind of like clogged up or not. This one looks perfectly fine. Pop your new one in. And reinsert the clip. All right, so there's the first one done. Plug it back in. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the driver's side. <laughs> and sometimes they just pop out themselves. The reason that happened is because in here is the shift valve and it is spring-loaded, so I guess the force just popped it right out. Now these have the same types of clips, but they actually stick out a little through the bottom so you can get into them easier. And don't lose the clip. I didn't though. So once again, 
This is spring loaded. I'm gonna show you what popped out. Right here is the shift valve that is controlled by the solenoid. And uh, this is under spring pressure. So it was trying to pop out and it popped the whole solenoid out. So I'm gonna put that back in and now remove the other one. So this one is under a lot more pressure than the other one. So once you get that started, just keep applying pressure, get the clip up there, and there you go. Now you can plug them back in. Here is all the goop that was stuck to the magnet. So this is combined from metal shavings. It's pretty normal to find, so I wouldn't be too alarmed. Now we're gonna focus on the gasket around the outside. This looks like it was, uh, it actually was a ga like a pre-made gasket because it has this tab on it. Actually has a couple of tabs. So this looks like, uh, a pre-made gasket, but also it might have a mix of RTV and a gasket, which usually is recommended against, but it seems like that might be the case. So hopefully the actual gasket material isn't too hard to get off, but it uh, looks like it might be. Sheesh. As you can see, there's rust along the edge, so moisture must have been trapped there. So right now I'm applying gasket remover. This will really help to get off whatever's left from that last gasket. So what you do is you apply it and then you let it sit for like 15 minutes and then get back to scraping. All right, so I just let this stuff sit for a little bit and now I'm scraping it off with the razor blade. And be very careful with something sharp like a razor blade because it can score the surface And that is the pan all cleaned up. If you look around the outer edges, there's a little bit of stuff left over, but all we really care about is the center where there's that lip and the inside. So it cleaned up pretty well. It took like two hours, but here we are. So let's get this installed. So now we can start putting the bolts in. Now I'm using an impact gun, but it's on the very lowest setting and I'm just gonna get it so that the bolt is touching the pan. Now go ahead and torque this down the spec. You want to torque the bolts down in the order shown on this diagram, but basically you're working from the inside out. Now we can reinstall this exhaust flange and the three nuts that hold it in place. And torque this down the spec. Install this exhaust hanger now. <laughs> it 
just like, just like that. Now reinstall the shift cable. And don't forget the clip. Now find your transmission dipstick on my truck. It is this red handled one. Pull that and pop it out. There is writing on this dipstick. It basically says to check the fluid level while it's in park at idle and the transmission's warm. Now we know we have to add fluid. Ideally, you would know exactly how much fluid you drained from the pan. Unfortunately, we did not do that. So what we're gonna do is put a couple quarts in, maybe three quarts, and then we're going to let the truck idle and warm up. And then we're gonna check the dipstick again to see how much fluid we need to add. At the very base of this dipstick, there is a cold mark. So when you're checking um, at temperature, there's these hatch marks. That's where the hot area is. But you wanna at least make sure that you're at the cold mark before starting and trying to drive the vehicle. So I just took the truck for a drive. It works great. The shifting feels like brand new, but uh, now we need to check for the fluid level after it's warmed up. So you wanna wipe it down. And it is bone dry. So we definitely need to add some fluid to this. So I just added the last quart from the first gallon. Now the challenge here is you just added fluid so it's all along the filler neck. You gotta try and discern the difference between what's fluid that's went down the filler and what's actually the level. So judging by this, it looks like it's reading fluid almost at the hot mark, but I'm still not 100% sure. I'm gonna check it one more time. And it's dry. We put about five quarts in total, so let's go ahead and check the dipstick level. And that looks good. That's about the top third of the hatched section of the dipstick, so we should be good to go. So that's it. That's how you replace the shift solenoids and the torque converter clutch solenoid. We hope you found this video to be helpful. Everything that we use will be in the description below. If you did find this video to be helpful, please give us a big like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.